Who wants free maps performance? I know you do. This is what you got to do. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours. If we like your comment, you'll get free access to maps performance. This is a phenomenal aesthetic and athletic training program. It's both. Aesthetic and athletic. Say that three times fast. It's really, really hard. Also, we're running a huge promotion. Right now, Maps Anabolic is 50% off, and our Shredded Summer Bundle, which includes multiple workout programs, is 50% off. You can find all those at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code April Special. All right? Enjoy the podcast. <laughs> fucking, just fucking. I have, uh, hold on, I have. Just. Do it afterwards. Just fucking. I have some. They don't even fucking know. They don't they, even. They don't even know. Nobody. They don't even fucking. They don't know. They don't even know. They don't know. Bro, you got a fucking. <laughs> they don't even know. Hey, I'm so. Hey, the shirts. We got them, dude. We ripped them out quick. I'm so pumped. Yeah, about. the shirts are fucking out, flying. Yeah, yeah. they Already. don't even know shirts because yeah, because people get it. Yeah, you know, yeah. I they, love. They it. don't know. I <laughs> absolutely. You can find <laughs> they don't it. Don't know the, what's uh, underneath. Hey. Yeah. Andrew over here, maybe over here, over here, here. mindpumpstore.com is where you'll find the Justin yeah. Andrews. Uh, Awesomeness. <laughs> yeah. The, they don't even know sure. Uh, uh, that was supposed to just be for me. Uh, yeah. Now it's out in the world. Bro, I, I just, wanted one. I hella wanted he one. Just so. quiet, he just quietly plots. So yeah. he does. He yeah. watches us <laughs> work out and talk yeah. shit. Uh, and he's in the back and he's like, That's how I do everything. When we go home, he does extra sets. Yeah. Calculated. <laughs> you know, like, how much shit were they talking? You know, how can I get them when they don't see it coming? <laughs> he's yeah. eating, while he's eating cheese. Yeah. yeah. I'm just like writing notes. You know, Adam said this. You know, like, <laughs> Sal. Shut you know, up. I'm coming for him on this one. Shut were, up, hey, dude. now, were, were you guys ever like, so I, here's something I don't know if I've ever shared with you guys. So I used to keep, um, maybe I have, sticky pad notes. Like oh, when no, I, you, I know what you're going to say. When I was 20, I used to have like- All note, the people that said you yes. couldn't. Yes. Oh, Are they God, revenge bro. notes? Kind of. Yeah. You know, not so much that as much as they were like competition. Like, so when I first got into the space, right, it, it, as a You'll trainer, never amount to anything. And you're like, I'm going to write that down. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm going to write that down. Stick that Tell me who that. said that? No, I had I had uh, the club that I started at, right? The very first club I ever started at as a personal trainer. I was 20 years old. It was at Capital McKee, 24 Hour Fitness, and the top trainers. So like, and and what they did in revenue and stuff. So that was mm -hmm. all over. And I had it like in my mirror. Someone I'm brushing my teeth. <laughs> Just angry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get them. I, you know, 100 <laughs> percent identify with that. I, Dude, it, it, and that's it the worked, thing. bro. Uh, you think that we've gone past that? We have not. Like, we're always looking for that. Like, I don't know if you guys notice this, but we'll look and see, like, okay, who's kind of, like, doing what we're doing? Or who's, you know, some have somebody out there that we can at least be like, oh, you're have, doing it that way? Ha, huh, watch ha, this. Have we noticed that? It's like, it's like an open conversation. Yeah, it all is. Well, it's a little harder now, though. We're, you have to it be, is harder You got to be careful, right? Yeah, you, we, we'll be the bully. You can always punch up. You can't punch down. You punch no. down, you're a bully, right? So yeah. that's why it was okay I for mean, me you to- can, but it's, it's frowned <laughs> it's upon, apparently. Yeah, Definitely proud of <laughs> yeah. Justin's Whatever. Gonna, yeah. Justin's gonna write a book. You can punch <laughs> you down. You can totally punch down, you guys. Punching down is way, fine. Yeah. No, yeah, uh, anger is uh it can be a great motivator. Now it can consume the shit out of you though, but it definitely can be a good motivator yeah, yeah, initially. Yeah, yeah, Otherwise yeah. you just drive yourself. That book to, I was talking about yeah. that I'm reading right now, he he talks a lot about that. He definitely is one of those guys that had like a chip on his shoulder and used that as a as a, a main motivator. You know who's time. constantly motivated by just people telling me I can't and I'm just pissed. Our, Craig good, Caperso. our good friend no, Lane. Lane Norton, oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, Lane too. Lane yeah. and Craig are both. Yeah, yeah Craig's like both that, have too. that Yeah, they're just like, they get in laser mode, you know, like uh, Terminator mode. But Lane, like if the whole world was Well, like, Lane comes from the bullying, yes. Craig comes from the sports. Yes. Yeah. Like Craig, Craig is the the, Craig's hella competitive. Yeah, very competitive athlete, and so yeah. he has not if moved you, out if of you that. Like, if you honestly, sincerely want Lane Norton to not crush or whatever, the best possible thing you could do is just be cool and tell yeah. him he's doing a great job. If everybody did that, you'd be like, what, where's my focus? <laughs> I, need, I need some ammo. Someone needs to piss me yeah. off. You yeah. know? <laughs> he, <laughs> I have no fuel. He eats it up, <laughs> Eats dude. it up, bro. I, Speaking of anger, oh, my God, I'm finally feeling better. Yeah, you but, woke, you came in with. You know what? You came in very moody. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, very, was he, he not? You got a little moody cloud from yeah, that. I just yeah. transferred over <laughs> I did. and rained down on you. Very moody this I morning, but guy. It, it only lasted about ten percent of the amount of time. Ah, <laughs> get out of here with that! I'm already over it. Yeah. You would have been moody for a week. He's no, even one up in you on your moody. No, that's not true. Dang. I was so mad, dude. So mad. This is the the third or fourth time now that our car got broken into. I am so... Yeah, that's infuriating. You know, so, you know our listeners are like, where the fuck does Sal live? You, you want to know where I live? <laughs> 
San Jose. That's where I live. <laughs> this Jose. this city is gone. I swear to God, dude, you're gonna spend millions of dollars on a house, and then if you don't lock your car or whatever, it's gonna get broken into. That's just yeah. the reality. It's literally Mad Max out here it's in California. Get, oh my God, I'm so mad because and then it's not like they stole anything I can't replace. Like I get it, it wasn't that big of a deal, but just thinking that some, it's the hassle, man. Some piece of shit's hands are all over my and they car, don't do, and they don't do nothing about it. That's why yeah. I was asking you. I'm like, yeah. why are you even filing a police report? Because I have to do something. I, yeah, I know you're saying yeah. that, but then that just that just makes it worse because you have to do all the work for that. Dude. And they literally, you know how they file it away? <laughs> that's hey, that's hey, exactly hey, what they do. Put they, this oh, in the yeah, car yeah. theft file. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll let you know we have leads. <laughs> yeah, I think I think what I think don't you guys I, get yeah. fingerprints? No, I remember <laughs> that. I think I told that story. Did I tell that story? Yeah, that pictures. So Look my car's this. been stolen. I've had two cars stolen from the front of my house, and I remember uh, asking the police officer. I believe they laughed at me. I think they chuckled. You know, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so insulting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. I, was so, I really thought I was like, you know, you guys gonna check for fingerprints yeah. or doing yeah. that? There's semen somewhere. I've seen. Somebody yeah, with me. there's going to be DNA somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Find the DNA. Why aren't you guys wearing rubber gloves? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't yeah. this in a database? No, they don't give a shit. Yeah. They have no. way yeah, more. Nothing yeah. happens. They, they got other laugh. stuff to worry about. Yeah. And it's just, ah, oh, Understandably so. so, right? You know, so, I mean, I, I get it, right? Dude, there's a part yeah. of me, and this is just, I'm not going to do this, okay? I'm not a violent person, but there's a part of me as a, a, as a father and a husband. And uh -huh. any, listen, let me tell you something right now. Any man worth his salt. When you feel like your family's, you know, was threatened or you feel like their safety has been compromised, there's this inner oh. pr primal feeling you have where literally I'm in my head and I'm thinking, you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. I'm going to camp out and I'm going to wait for this son of a bitch to come through my car yeah. and then I'm going to break his legs. The dark thoughts come. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is primal. It's like it's like embedded in our DNA. You know, it's like if you feel like you've been violated or, or, or your family's threatened in any way, all of a sudden, like, the shark eyes are just like... Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, the, the lids I went through down. that. I told you, yeah. I was like, oh, I had that where we had, like, a lot of problems with break-ins and things, like, even in my neighborhood. And I, and I figured out where it was, like all coming from and it turns out like it wasn't but I've kind of went a little crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh no, it's I, a, it was just like it was a protective thing. It's a total look, I like the 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 worst <laughs> I ever felt it. My baby Bjorn was stolen today. I'm going to break somebody's legs. Okay, so you know it's <laughs> funny. You're right. It, you're right from a logical standpoint it sounds silly, but in your mind as a dad you're like of course. they stole my child's thing. Like right. well, I remember my my house got yeah. broken into years yeah. ago. They, this is when my my older son is fifteen now. He was just a, he was like four years old, five years old. They stole his piggy bank, oh, and I remember thinking, my dude, child's piggy bank. And a I, special place in hell. And I told you guys, I went through this like this buying spree of like weapons, <laughs> like <laughs> swords. Oh, and that's right. That's when you got a sword, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> samurai, a sword. crossbow. <laughs> I'm gonna get you know, all these crazy. Like, what am I gonna do with this shit? You know, I know. Like, I just, ninja star, just in case. Like, like, I'm, gonna, like, a, like I'm gonna kill someone with a sword. You know how hard that would be to kill someone with a sword? You'd have to like kill them for a while. You know what yeah. I mean? It's yeah. not like a gun. You're Unless like, it's really sharp. Die, yeah. die, die. You know what I mean? And then afterwards, you're like, what have I done? Wow. Wow. He stole my piggy bank. Yeah. That's what he gets. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. You can go to dark places. Anyway, I'm feeling a little bit a little bit better. Yeah, you're coming out of it. No, a little are. bit. Yeah. Just a bit. But I, I emailed the like the property manager. They don't give a shit. No. It's not our responsibility. Blah, blah. Come on, respond a little better, dude. Yeah, well, whose is it? Yeah, where do you park your car? I mean, you did leave the door unlocked. Maybe. Ooh. Well, I, I mean, that. was there any broken windows? It's, listen. Okay. <laughs> that's, just, that's probably it's what happened. significant detail, Adam. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. That's probably what happened. Here's where I would have a hard time or where, what would what I think would temper me a little bit is there's also a chance that it wasn't the, the homeless encampment that you have around the corner and it was teenage boys that were just running. They checked, of door, they checked door handles of every night. You know, like, of course. Because that's happened to me too. Like yeah. so, I've had two cars stolen, and then I have several. Yeah, cars. but those were ex girlfriends, I'm sure. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, they were. Dude. Those are like, those are like, that's when it gets keyed, dude. That's a that's a freaking. Has your car ever gotten that's keyed? A, yes, that's an angry chick move, dude. I've oh, had two cars keyed. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's an, that's definitely an angry. Just chick along move. the wow. side of the car. Two? Yeah, Man. and if it's a dude, you're a bitch, bro. Come on, dude. That's like a super bitch move. Could you, ima you imagine seeing a guy oh. key a car? What yeah. are you doing, dude? If I saw a guy key somebody else's car, I punch, would, punch I would, the window I like would punch him. <laughs> if it wasn't even my car, if I saw a guy keying another guy's car, I would literally punch him. Like I don't care what that dude did yeah. for you to key his car. Like go fight him then, or go I mean, go go, go I settle peed another on my friend's car. But that's, that's the best story. That, is, that was a mistake. That was drunk though. Yeah, and I got you know punished big time. Well, wasn't that like a that was a prank thing going back? Yeah, and it was forth. a prank wars. Yeah, yeah. that's different, dude. Yeah. So did you guys? Uh, get, did either one of you guys get a chance to? Um, 
listen to the the Peter Lineman interview. Yeah, I did. I listened you know. to a good chunk of it. Okay. Yeah, a good chunk of it. So I'm first of all, I'm so excited. I think uh get to interview interview him in three weeks, I believe. Is it set up? Yeah, it's already booked. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, it's already booked. Uh, I wanted him to fly in, but he's he's out in Philadelphia and um flying right he's not flying right now. So it was like either I could wait uh, way down the road, or but I want to talk to him right now. I just feel like there's so much going on with like yeah, it's relevant. Yeah, it's really he, now. I did like what he said though. On that I love interview. everything he says. Well, dude. what he said in there. One part that I really liked is uh, what I hate is when because uh, politics is just it's infiltrated every part mm. of life, even mm -hmm. science. Right, even science. A study will come out, and then oh, that's a frustrating. The part. political machine will come in and twist it one way or another because uh, you know to, to benefit them or whatever, and. Economics has become politicized for a long time. Oh, very. And much I so. hate it because I'll hear an economist say, "Printing all this money, no, inflation's not going to happen." Which is just, it's just, no, of course, it's going to happen. That's that's how it works. And then, it, and it just makes me mad. Well, here he comes out and he says, "Oh no, inflation's already happened like crazy. Asset inflation is what's happened," which yeah. is true. Yeah. You look at the price of assets, the stock market, property, things of value, even expensive used cars. So cars that are used that tend to be collectibles or more expensive, those are starting to go up uh, quite a bit. So this is all the result of inflation from all these, all this money that's being printed. So I'm yeah. glad he said that. No, I, I I love everything he says. And for that exact reason, I've listened to him, I don't know how many hours and hours of listening to him now. Uh, and I have no idea his political affiliation. I have no clue where he leans left or right because the way he presents it's information. Just mm -hmm. And it's very rare to find that even in economics. Either one, I find a, a political skew, left or right, one direction, like the, when yeah. they're talking about economics, which is lame that they have to go that route, or they have a bias because they're trying to sell you a product. Oh, take up my pick up my book or, you know, yeah. buy some gold or, you know, take take my courses, you know. And so right. a lot of times I don't get that from the interviews that I've listened to with him. I, I think he presents really interesting information. The most interesting stat to me, okay? Because I'm still having a really hard time wrapping my brain around can this keep going? Can the stocks keep going? Can the real estate keep going? Is it, in, in, in all of our time we've seen uh, the, the, a crash after these these crazy rises like this? So right. it's, isn't it inevitable? It's inevitable. This is going to crash down. Mm -hmm. But we're in, we're in a very different time right now. When you talk about the, the the amount of money that we have we have printed right now, I mean you're talking about I believe we're over sixty five percent of all money that is in circulation today did not exist just, you know, a year and a half ago. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. crazy, right? So this is different. This is not the same as we, we we're we're definitely printing a lot faster and a lot more than we ever have. It's accelerating too. Right. Every time they do a new one. Exactly. And so it makes me wonder like, you know, is is this is it possible that we're going to see these homes which sound so crazy in San Jose that we talk about that are 1.5 for a, you know, beat up track home, could it be 2.2, 2.5 in a 5 years from now? Mm -hmm. And it's very, very possible. The stat that I thought was most alarming and interesting to me. Did you hear what um, what the trend has been for decades for the average amount of uh, savings and money in checking accounts. No, no, mm. I didn't get to that. Oh, part. okay. So I will love to hear what you guys think here. So the, I'll give you what. So the, our savings just going down. No, no, no. no listen, okay. listen, 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 listen. So uh, the, 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 we have the uh, the the data for this over you know several generations. We've had a an average of about three trillion dollars collectively in in everybody's checking and savings account. It stays right around there. Okay. It goes up or down a little bit per year and okay. you know the peaks and valleys, but it pretty much averages right there. Do you know where that number is right now? No. And take a guess. Let me hear what you guys would think is where what it is right now. Now this is including checking all, and savings. But I know, but this is including the very wealthy, the very like everybody. This is across the United States. Okay, so mm. I would assume it's much higher. Mm. I would assume it's much higher because uh, there are some segments of the economy mm. that have just crushed, and a lot of it has to do with people who are in great positions to crush. Well, yeah, imagine too when you're talking about uh, trillions of dollars, another trillion is a lot more high. Right, 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 right. So what what is your guess on what? I you don't. Know? I would assume it's more though. Oh. I don't know what how much more, but I would I say have no idea. nine trillion. Yeah. Oh. Wow. It is three X, dude. Wow. Three trillion. Now, I, I would I would love to dive into that number and see where it's coming from because I would bet that. Well, there's I, a, there's he he does. Oh, does he? Yeah, yeah. So he, so uh, some of it is. I mean, there's a lot of things, right? Um, 
And you can't obviously pinpoint exactly how much of everything, but uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, unintended uh, savings, right? Is that what he calls it? Uh, is that what he calls it, Doug? Unintended savings? Is it, I think that's I how you- can't remember the term. Exactly. Basically, because of COVID, there was yeah. a lot of, you know- Trips to Paris or Disneyland or so people just saving canceled so they're yeah staying home and just so like they're canceling stacking that's right then you also have trillions of dollars that got printed and right. sent to people you also had a lot of people that made a ton of money on their real estate over the last five to seven years mm-hmm. so you've got a lot of factors and, and probably fear and from stocks still. there's a lot of stocks that were inflated over the last mm-hmm. you know decade that people have cashed out or pulled out some of it so a lot of these people have got uh, that money right now and it's not being quite spent, not at the rate that it is normally being spent and it's going to go somewhere. It's going to go back into the economy. It's going to either go into goods and services or travel or buying more companies or what he speculates, people buying their first time homes and real estate yeah. and things like that. And so I thought that would, I, I actually would have thought at these, these, these trying times of unemployment where it's at and what happened with COVID that a lot of people were living off their savings and there wouldn't mm-hmm. be as much money in the savings and checking. It just blew my mind when he- See, this is why I would like to see like, w- like which segment of the population has that increase gone so to So he mostly. talks about this also. Right. So he, he says that we have seen the greatest transfer of wealth with no legislation ever in our history. Thought that was really interesting. Mm-hmm. Without any, any laws or bills or anything being passed, you literally- took all you have favored the wealthy and that is what I try to tell all my friends that were voting for a lot of this stuff and is pro pushing out all the all the printing and stuff is like dude you have no idea if you are middle class or lower this is really hurting you more than anything else even though you're hearing you know Biden talking about increasing taxes on the wealthy and it doesn't matter it still serves the wealthy way more they are now in a position with where real where because cash is cheap and they're gonna, and that's gonna stay. By yeah, the way. interest rates are so low, and you're somebody that can leverage. That's uh, right, loans. right. You've got good you're credit. You're buying property. You got you're good capital. Cre- you got off. good credit. You've got savings already, and it's gonna inflate anyway. So it's like a, it's like a no brainer. And that's what, and that to me, this explains a lot of what I see every day when I'm looking at real estate and I'm, we're going after deals and we talk and it's like, oh my god, there's people coming in here. They're paying. 20, 30% over asking with no contingency, no appraisals, cash. all cash. Mm-hmm. That makes no investing sense whatsoever. It's like it breaks all the rules in investing in real yeah. estate. Mm-hmm. But if you if you are in this position, if you're somebody with lots of money and you know if they keep printing money, the mm-hmm. inevitable is going to happen, and, like you said. And so. not to mention that the, the, the regulations or the laws that they passed with COVID uh, hurt small businesses very, very hard and did not hurt big businesses at all in many cases, and in fact, might have helped them. So if you have a small bookstore or a small hardware shop or a small, you know, whatever, restaurant, whatever, destroyed, but if you're Amazon, if you're, you know, DoorDash, if you're these other large companies, Mm -hmm. people are still buying stuff during that period of time. They still needed things. They're just not going to the local store. They're all shut down. Right. So you, so that's what you're going to see this huge transfer of the market and they'll, and they're continuing to push in this direction. Another way you transfer the, the market is by raising the minimum wage. Anytime you raise it up, it's the small businesses that have a tough time paying. The bigger ones are they love it. They in fact, if you see if you see where some of these big companies like Walmart when they support uh minimum wages, that's why. They yeah. love if the, every time they raise it, they kill more of their small competition because they can't afford to pay uh, those types of well, wages. I've always so, noticed. I mean, I've noticed that the first thing with the the pandemic was how hard small business got hit and wasn't being talked about enough. I felt like, it, you know, in terms of these policies and, you know, who who they're shutting down versus who they're allowing to, uh, you know, still be open and run and thrive. And, and it just was completely obvious. You know, if you have that kind of reach and infrastructure where you can buy these online products, mm-hmm. you can pull it off, you know, your business is going to explode. Well, remember what happened in California? There was that one video went viral a while ago where there was a, a lady who had a coffee shop Coffee shop, of course, shut down. She was going out of business. She was in LA. Her parking lot in front of her coffee shop, she shows up to get stuff from her her office. Again, out of business because ordered to shut down by the state. And she sees all these tents and chairs and stuff outside. And she's like, what the hell's going on? 
Well, Hollywood got a pass and they were filming a fucking movie <laughs> right outside. And these are now why they're connected. They could go to the governor or whatever and say, Hey, we want to make this movie. And the governor's like, well, you know, you're my friend or, Oh, it's this many jobs. So you get a, you get, you get a pass. You know, you're not going to get a pass if you have a small coffee shop. Who are you going to talk to? And so it's just happening more and more. That's what people need to realize. There's going to be a shakedown. And the the more the bigger government gets and the more it intervenes, the more it benefits the bigger guy. It just works that way. So we need to kind of step back. Yeah. Step back and help people out. Involuntary savings. That was the term that I was trying to think of. But, Mm. you know, he does talk also and speculates that we will see a a rise back in, in brick and mortar again. Um, in fact, the, the statistics that show how much people were shopping online did not increase as much as you would have thought of considering that you, all the brick and mortars were handcuffed. He, mm-hmm. he talked, he got into it, gives us, he gives this great analogy of him playing basketball and averaging eight points a game. And then if, you know, if the next year, uh, he goes, my season average is eight points a game. I play basketball and he goes, and then the next season, uh, they tie all the defenders hands behind their back and my average goes up to nine. Are you impressed? Mm. And that's what he said happened to online sales in this last year. Of course we were, you know, consumers still are addicted to buying and purchasing and that trend's been going Mm -hmm. forever now or not forever, but for, you know, 50 plus years, we've been on that, that trajectory already. And it really didn't change that much. It just kind of shifted a little bit over to online and they're already Mm. seeing as states are starting to open up that, that decrease and so a lot of people thought it was going to change, right? This oh. is going to completely change the landscape forever, which I can't remember I've, who. Yeah, go ahead. I can't remember who we interviewed who said this. Um, they, they, they talked about, you know, being prepared for a lot of these things, but not pivoting so hard that you commit to sure, do a whole yeah, other way right. of doing business. I think that highlights this. Yeah, yeah, no, I've I've speculated this a bit too because like human, like our behaviors, like a lot of people really enjoy going uh, to physical places, and and it's circumstantial. Like the circumstances right now is that you can't, uh, you know, a lot of businesses couldn't like maintain that they they were forced. It was forcibly shut down. Yeah. Uh, versus like that wasn't a, a consumer driven, uh, you know, like a way to, to, to handle it. Sure. But you still, you're going to have some, you're still going to have some permanent effects. I don't, I don't think it's going to be completely It'll, it'll take a while though to mend a lot of it, but well, I, I see consumers like starting to slowly demand. But my it point is there's well, businesses that are not going to come back. There's going to be some businesses that never come back. Well, that there's always gonna happens. Be, though, yeah, right. Well, not like this. This definitely caused it. This was a, a this definitely forced uh, a lot more change. Um, this has changed people's behaviors somewhat, maybe not totally, but somewhat. So there's definitely some long-term uh, ramifications. The part that bothers me the most is policies like this hurt people who save the most. Yeah. Unless you're investing in assets so that your your wealth grows along with the inflation of these things. If you just have cash, your cash, you, you're actually, without realizing it, it's losing its value well, that's, every year. He, that, that's mm-hmm. the transfer of wealth that he said. that We saw the greatest transfer of wealth from the retired and the conservative saver uh, over to the uh, aggressive aggressive investor. Inve- yeah. aggressive investor. That's we just shifted yeah. that yeah. completely. Yeah, this mark is completely for that. Yeah, you screw up by printing that much money. It's an in, it's inevitable. Those things assets are going to go up if consumer either or or both is going mm-hmm. to happen. <clears throat> either consumer goods uh, will go up a little bit or some for sure. You'll see that with assets and things like that. And the and the the people that will benefit the most from that are the people that already have some of these assets and are in a position to leverage and buy more of those assets. And you really, the person who gets the most hurt is that, you know, family or guy or girl that has been busting their ass for 30 years in the same job, saving their ass off, living well below their means, and finally reached a place of, let's say, $400,000 in their savings, which is a lot of Without work. realizing it got taxed by inflation. That's right. Now worth, you know, 10% less right. without even doing anything. Right, right, right. Yeah, crazy. So I got to ask you guys a question Uh-oh. before you, you cha- change the subject. Um, would you guys opt in for cryogenically freezing your body after you die? Yes. To wait to freeze my body after I die? Why? To yes. Wait for- like, Dis- like Walt Disney did. So there's like 146 people that in this is somewhere in 
I think it's in like Phoenix or somewhere in Arizona where they're all cryogenically frozen. And, and their hopes is that at some point science is going to go ahead and, and basically revive them. Right. So now they're going to keep living uh, this this crazy zombie uh, existence. So yeah. I, 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 Walt Disney did this, I believe, right? Doug, can you fact check me here? Because I, I thought yeah, I, think that's I, I hadn't a rumor. heard that. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a rumor. Is it? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Well, fact check me then because I thought that was true. Now, you know, Justin, with that, so you can spend money uh, to f- to cryogenically freeze everything, or you can get the discount. This isn't true. Where <laughs> no, they just discount. freeze your head. Shut oh. up. I'm serious. Just freeze the brain. Just your head. So you or put, plop it on a body. Or freeze the whole body and everything. <laughs> you can actually do that. Is that true? Yeah. Straight Frankenstein, yes. So what you're doing is you're signing up for future experiment is what you're doing. Yeah. Is you're signing yourself up for in the future, then you can use my body. Use my body. Use my body. Right. So let's see. He was. No, 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 he no, was no. not. Uh, no, 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 no. According to his daughter, that he she's denied that. So That he was cryogenically oh. well, frozen. Well, shit. You imagine well, the power goes you out? You said there's, yeah. 100, <laughs> there's 170 <laughs> people. Is that what you said that have done it? 446. Uh, anybody famous? Do you know? Did they, they list didn't, them? They didn't list the names. Uh, I, yeah. think they, they I would do it. Would anonymous. you do it? Would you do it? No, I, you wouldn't I, do it. It's it's just unnatural. Like uh, I'm here right now. Like I'm going through this experience. I just feel like like it's just so what? I'm gonna where am I gonna come back from? Like who is? That's not gonna be me. That's you know what? So there's this like this this question. I don't. Know, it's this philosophical challenge, right? This question where they say uh, there's there's a few different ver- uh, versions of it. One is. If I take your arm off and replace it with a bionic arm, are you still you? And you say yes. Mm-hmm. And then you keep going down that path. What right. if I replace your left arm? What if I replace your whole body? Mm. Whatever I replace most of your brain, what you know, half your brain. At what point are you no longer you? Then there's the other then there's another mm. kind of version of this where they say if they could take your brain and somehow completely mimic it 100% in a computer and then your voice comes out and it's you, is that really you or is it a copy of you? Mm-hmm. In which case, there would be impossible to. Determine. Well, it's not really you if it if it if it lacks your soul and conscious, right? Well, mm-hmm. if you lack if it la- if it lacks those two things, then I think it's not. Well, you. it freezes soul. No, you're not going to. That's, That's why I'm like whatever. It's but you're right. It's not probably me. My my soul would leave right when I right. when I die. But they would reincarnate me somehow, and like me would be running around. Reanimate Adam. Reanimated yeah. Adam. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. What's that movie? Um, uh, Idiocracy. You guys ever seen that? Yeah. No, no. Uh, you never seen Idiocracy? No, no. <laughs> so this dude is any good? I love that. Movie. Yeah, he's just a, some regular guy or whatever, mm-hmm. and he gets frozen. And then he wakes up sometime in the future, and over time the, 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 in the movie, what happens is dumb people have more kids than smart yeah. people. They, they've outpopulated so everybody. So over time, the whole I mean, everybody's just stupid. So he comes out, and he was just like a regular dude, but he's like this genius mm-hmm. in this new world. Like yeah. the president is this like pro wrestler. Yeah, <laughs> and they all have like sponsorships for everything. Yeah, yeah and, like, oh, and they don't drink water. They drink this like Gatorade type drink or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That, they can't figure out why their crops keep dying. For the last time, I'm pretty sure what's killing the crops is this Brondo stuff. The Brondo's got what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. So wait a minute. What you're saying is that you want us to put water on the crops? Yes. Water. Like out the toilet? Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be out of the toilet, but but yeah, that's the idea. But Brondo's got what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. (laughs) <laughs> <They keep watering. laughs> yeah. it's actually a pretty funny movie. Yeah. speaking of freezing i last night i so uh, my uh, my chili pad right is, is set on like i do really low i've talked about katrina goes really high or whatever i don't know if you guys noticed this but um i have it s- scheduled so it cools down really nice right right as i'm getting about a half hour or so i would say so I it's wrote, ready yeah so it's ready so it's cool but it's not at the bottom still. So like I, I put it all the way down to 55, I think is the lowest, or like 58, I think is where yeah. I have it. So I get, but I also know that it takes Polar a good bed. solid hour or so to get there. When I get in the bed at the half hour mark, it's not freezing cold. It's just cold and my body kind of warms it up and then it's, it's basically competing with it the rest of the night and I sleep perfect. Like I've, mm-hmm. I've literally got it down to a science. The only time it's thrown off is if I get to the bed later, like it, then I, is it too cold? Yeah, then it's like, and then it's like, <laughs> like, like last night. So where I'm at, it's cold, much colder there than it is over here. Uh, we're like, we're normally like 10, 15 degrees colder. So the last few this week, we had this kind of cold spell that came through, and so my house was cold. You know, I was by the fire downstairs for that. Then I come upstairs like an hour late, and 
just freezing cold. I, and Katrina's got her so hot, so I'm like huddled up next to her, and she's like, "What are you doing?" Because like, I never like to <laughs> put cuddle. your cold ass feet I've on. I've never, her. yeah, I never like to cuddle like that. I'm like, my bed's, my side's too cold. I can't. Yeah, go. no, it's uh, uh, my cousin. So I gave him uh, mine. So we had, we got an extra one. I gave it to him. He loves it. Him and his wife absolutely love it. They said it's one of the best things. And I know it keeps getting ranked um, as one of the better ones. With with mine, uh, I like to set it so that it. I think I've told you guys this. It, it warms up in the morning. It wakes me. up. I do that now. How do you How do you like that? Oh, I love it. You're the one. I told you for the longest time I hadn't done it. When we moved to the new place, like new ba- new bed, new mattress. And I got the the dual control Uller everything. Uh, so like this is the first time like I got it like all set up perfect and I mm. you know t- t- Katrina wants hers warm pretty much all night she doesn't even use the cooling I'm like dude you'll mm. sleep better no doesn't want it I'm like okay whatever it's your it's your Uller you can use it however the fuck you want yeah. so she runs it hot the entire night I go ice cold and then about an hour before I want to wake up I I ha- set it to heat up and it took me a while to get that down right so <clears throat> it takes it, it to me it takes longer than about you know, 30 minutes for it to really warm up to wake me up. So I had done, I made the mistake originally. No, you got to say, I set mine an hour before. Yeah, I yeah. made the mistake originally of only like, oh, I was like, oh, I don't want it to wake me up too early. I don't want it to wake me up at four, right? So I, I was turning on the heat like at five o'clock or 5.30. I don't remember what I had it at before. And then I was like, oh, it's not waking me up. I have to, it needs to be warm, really warm for a while to like get me all the way I, up. I get, I'm less stiff. Have you noticed that from the cool from the cool bed? Oh, I don't know if I've noticed that. That's interesting. I wake up less stiff. Like I'm like really I mean, yeah. Now it's not cold like ice, so it's not like I'm icing my body. But I do wake yeah. up. I think it's just because I get better sleep. It keeps me. What I notice is it it keeps me down. Like it, I'm out. Like it, I sleep really really well right now. It's yeah. I, that thing has been one. Yeah, of the I don't best. get up like sometimes you know when when you feel like you're a little uncomfortable. You you tend to notice too like oh no I gotta pee or whatever, and so I gotta get up and and like I don't get up at all when yeah. I have to just, that's, just that's pee. Me. In bed. Well, I just in bed. <laughs> just let it. Well, I run know, hot. And absorb it. it. And sometimes you go to bed and you don't feel like you're that warm. But under the sheets, if I'm under there long yeah. enough, it'll heat up, and then I'll wake up a couple hours in. Where that's what I love about it is that it's measuring your temperature and the bed temperature, and it and it, it will adjust to keep it at the temperature yeah. you set. Yeah. So it'll it'll keep if you start to heat up your body. It's not like it's set at a, a temperature. It'll actually increase to bring Depending it down. Depending on my dreams, typically. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I hate I hate that when you, it's like, you know, I, I set my alarm at five, uh-huh. but three or 4 a.m., I got to get up to pee. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh. and it's and like, just like Ugh, and yeah. You're to hold and it. I, yes, dude. And it's like, oh, fuck it. I can hold this for another hour. Yeah. But instead, what ends up happening is I end up getting shitty sleep for an hour. Yeah. Because I'm, uh, you keep thinking about it. it's like in, in, entering into your dreams too. Oh, it's, yeah, it's the worst. Hey, you guys hear about New York City's? Uh, they passed a couple, a couple of prostitution. Things. So there's that. So yeah. they they decriminalized. Wow. Now he okay. Here's a wonderful. I love. You're gonna pitch us on a business idea right no, now. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, I want to talk to you for a second. <laughs> Only fans and weed. Yeah, yeah w- right. wives, wives are going to love this yeah. one. Yeah, just <laughs> cakes yeah. and plates. Cakes um, and plates. No, uh, I love situations like this because I get to point out how politicians operate, right? So hmm. here's a politician that wants New York to, say, to to think that they're doing a great job. Like, hey, uh, I think it's if you're if you're voluntarily having sex with someone for money, it's weird that we throw you in jail. They're not legalizing it, but they decriminalize it, right? So it sounds good, right? Except they actually, they're asking for sex for money is still criminal. So what they did is they essentially kept it the same. Mm-hmm. So if you go ask, if you go try to talk to a prostitute or whatever, you're still, you know, going to get criminalized. Um, so it doesn't really change anything. It sounds good. Doesn't really change much. So oh, the law decriminalizes so it for the, for the sex workers. But if you're a John, which is the, what yeah. they call them, whatever. You're still, Sounds you're still like a, in big a trouble. Gavin Newsom. I don't, I don't understand what the, what's the point of that then? Yeah, but the it, point is that it sounds nice. It's to your constituents. Yeah, but don't you think that a lot of officers then are just going to turn? They're not going to waste their time chasing Johns. Then I feel like it's the same thing that you see with marijuana. Uh, you know, I've, I don't know if you've talked to cops lately. Like if a cop pulls you over for speeding and you've got like a, a joint in your car or you have weed or whatever like that, like nobody's messing with you. No. Yeah. It's just, unless it, you're smoking it while you're driving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, if you yeah. were caught actually smoke, but I mean, it's, it's got to a, a point like that where, and even if you had, you know, steroids or like, we, I feel like we've got to a place now that it's just, if it's for one person, a lot yeah. of cops are just like, yeah, I don't I'm not, know. I'm not messing I don't with know it. what they're, how they're ordering their police department. Mm. Um, because I know, you know, in, in California, they made marijuana, uh, possession. It, like at bottom, it's on the bottom of the list. It's a misdemeanor. now. Yeah. Oh. But my point is with this, 
Yes, it's decriminalized for sex workers, still criminalized for people asking for sex, essentially making it the same. There's no real big difference. Well, I saw the headlines and I, my immediate thought was like, oh, this is a move, uh, you know, to bring back tourism. You yeah, because uh, you know <laughs> New York's been sort of in shambles, right? Yeah. So how are we going to get them back? Oh, speaking yeah. of which, did you guys see that? I don't remember who did this, but they were offering people a free joint for a vaccine in New York. Oh, so joints and uh, donuts, huh? <laughs> yeah. So if you got a vaccine and you bring your proof of vaccine, we'll give you a joint. I mean, and you can sell your body. I mean, for I, sex. Might, I might, I might, you might it. catch me on it. I, right? I might, I might, oh yeah, might get it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got like me there. Yeah, it was yeah. like this about the donuts. I'm like, yeah, I'm not a big donut I'm like, guy. Give me gifts. I'm not a big donut guy, yeah. but a joint, okay. Yeah, I know. Interesting, right? Yeah. Interesting stuff. Yeah. So anyway, I was going to ask you about your. Are you the one that ordered a million boxes of uh, Magic? <laughs> Did you Dude, see? I saw your story. I, I th- at first I thought it was like you know 15 or whatever, and then so it just kept the going and going and going. So this is actually kind of cool. I'm actually glad you brought it up. I posted it because uh, it was kind of funny, right? <clears throat> I actually did not order 40 boxes of Magic Spoon, although I ha- I have 40 boxes of Magic Spoon. Uh, four left over, and then two 16 cases. So this is how this is how this goes down. Okay, so Katrina is downstairs. I'm upstairs, and I'm like working or do something, and she's like yelling upstairs. I'm ordering magic spoon for you. What do you want? And I'm like, I want fruity. Get fruity. And she had, and I guess she had already put an order in for blueberry. She's like, Ah, damn it! I thought you you love blueberry. That's your favorite. I thought. I'm like, you know what? I've been really liking the fruity. Get fruity and some of that. She goes, Well, how many do you want? I'm like, Four, all four. And she's like. Four of them? And she's like, I'm like, yes, all fruity, no blueberry. I'm good on the blueberry. I just want all, fr-. and I'm yelling her to do that, right? So she, that that's the last I hear of it. Well, then all of a sudden, this big ass box shows up to my house, and I'm like, that looks like more than four yeah. fruity, right? And I open up, and she ordered four cases uh-huh. of, of it. So we got 16 boxes uh-huh. of that, right? And then on top of that, because we just recently, we recently moved, for some reason, one of the orders got shipped to the other house. So they they actually she she called and this is what I love so and by the way like what I uh, what was cool about this whole situation is this is uh, you know obviously we work with with Magic Spoon um, I can get free cereal if I want but I actually buy it and pay for it I also like doing this with our partners because I get opportunities just like this to actually experience their customer service without them knowing who I am so Katrina calls them and I and or emails first in and then it gets and then somebody actually talked to her. And that she doesn't tell them who she is or anything like that. So she, they don't know. And But she tells her the situation. Hey, I ordered this. And could you reroute the other one? And they're like, don't even worry about it. We'll send you another another box to your, your house. So right the now. people living at your old place got free Magic no, Spoon? No, it also got rerouted. So they looked up that we had purchased <clears throat> those four cases already in the, probably our buying history. And was like, don't even worry about it. We see that you're, you're, yeah. you consistently buy or whatever like that. We'll send you another case out right now. And then hopefully that one gets rerouted to your house. So I got the first 16. Then I got another 16. And then I got the rerouted <laughs> you get 16. the rerouted one. <laughs> yeah. so like, what is that? 40 something boxes. Dang, of, you have to have a cereal party. Oh, or dude, I have so many <laughs> boxes. Of cereal party. Cereal party. Yeah, yeah. I normally do not. I kind of use that for my commercial. Throw I, it in the bathtub. I know. I don't eat that much. Let's pour milk on But each I just other. thought that was yeah. great. You know, I thought that was a really great customer service that they would do that and do that not knowing who Katrina was when she was calling in. Yeah, but, but you eat yeah. you eat a box for a serving sometimes, don't you? I have. I don't do that normally at all. That has to be I'm like have to be in a like a real mood to do that, right? That's not like a good behavior of mine. What <laughs> kind of mood is it? Yeah, like, <laughs> like I train really like I hard. Deserve it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> train really hard. I'm low calorie. I'm probably also I just, I just picture you come home. I'm probably just, intoxicated. Just candles lit. Yeah. I yeah. deserve it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and he comes home and he's like, he, you know, he takes off yeah. his jacket and he's like, oh, man, what a tough day. It's been hard, you know? And then he's like, you know, and he lights his candles. And he's like, yeah. I deserve this. I mean, it kind of yeah. I mean, looks yeah. a little bit like that. You know, I Watching throw the, 16 and pregnant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Throw the, in the bathtub yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with the bubbles. It's yeah. kind of accurate, kind of accurate. But I don't do it that often. Um, I would say that my size serving is I get about four bowls, which, by the way, I was talking to someone today. Who said, man, I love the cereal, but I just feel like it's kind of expensive for how much you get. I'm like, you know, this is the same thing I used to have to teach people about protein powders. You know, you are paying for the protein. Mm-hmm. Show me something that has carbs are always cheap. Yes, carbs are hella cheap. Yeah. So if you just want sugar 
and and carbohydrates, you can get something. You can get boxes of cereal for two dollars. You can get it for yeah. super cheap. But what you are paying for, you get fruity O's, is the know, protein. And you got <laughs> the multi <laughs> meal, the, the, the well, they, off. well, yeah. they do that. They do this even with protein powders. Like you, I know. like people. Like I used to have clients, right? I would tell them, "This is the brand I want you to get." This is, and then they come back and they'd be like, and I'd see, and I'm like, "Why did you get this brand?" Oh, well, it was half the price of the brand you told me to. I said, yeah, but turn the label around. You're getting 10 grams of protein. I sent you one that's giving you 40 grams of protein. One, I need your protein intake higher. That's why I do it. Two, that is why it is this, half the price. You're getting, is, yeah. It's just like cheap Three, toilet paper. No sugar. It's just like cheap toilet paper. You buy a big old roll of <laughs> yes. cheap toilet paper. But you got to use twice as much toilet that's paper right. yeah, that's to right. do the same job. That's right. Otherwise, you get Otherwise the poke you through. You get it on your hand. That's you the poke through. Yeah. You don't want to get the poke. That through. is the same thing. So everybody that is that thinks that you know Magic Spoon is expensive, it is because it is more. It is higher protein than any cereal you can find on the market. That's right. And speaking of the poke through, there's this this prank I'm seeing on on social media that is f hilarious. Have you guys seen this? Where they'll blindfold someone. And then they'll take like an orange. So they'll take an orange and they'll scoop out the inside of the orange so it's empty. And then they'll fill it with Nutella. <laughs> Hold on, this is good. What? So you got an, you got like. I get it. I okay, get it. So, so full I, of Nutella. I'm trying to follow. Then you blindfold the other person. You don't, they don't see what's going on. You just blindfold them. And you say, stick your finger out. So they stick their finger out like this. And then you take the the, the, the orange with the Nutella and then you put it up to the finger and you, and you push their finger in it. And then you pull it out. And then before they take off the blindfold. You have your dog up on the table. Oh my god! With their butt, butt facing their butt. him. Ew! What, what is that, dude? Open up! Stop <laughs> you fucking kidding me! <laughs> Are you fucking serious? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So they look at their finger with Nutella on it. There's the dog's butt right in front of their face, and they all lose their shit. Oh my they god! They lose their mind. Of course. Time. It's oh, the that's best prank. so yeah. good! It's the best prank ever. <laughs> I saw one guy where this is is. But his, does does people like smell it first? Like, well, no, no. Know, I saw one guy like lose his shit, and yeah. his buddy grabbed his finger and then licked his. Finger. Oh, I was gonna say <laughs> that is what I would do to like take it to another level. I was gonna say it would be great to have one guy that is in on it, who's yeah. like too blindfolded. The one who's in on it knows that when you unblindfold, you just stick it in your mouth and yeah. you lick it. Look at the other guy. The other guy would probably freak no, out. Ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh. Oh, that's funny. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Go head over to mindpumpfree.com and go download some of our free guides. We teach you how to burn body fat more effectively, how to build more muscle, how to speed up your metabolism, raise your testosterone. We even have guides for personal trainers. They're all free, mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. Our first caller is Christine from Colorado. Hey, Christine, how can we help you? Hi. Hi. I am, um, first I want to say, I love you guys. Um, love listening to you. Um, but my question was I recently had surgery and, um, I'm going through max aesthetic right now. I'm in phase two and I can't do a lot of the chest and ab exercises. So I was just wondering, is that something I would just skip over? Should I add additional exercises to the other body parts or should I just try a new program period? Um, yeah, so that was just my question. Yeah, no, that's actually a good question because I, I, I get similar questions all the time where people will say things uh, like, uh, you know, I, I hurt my knee or my right arm is injured. Should I train the rest of my body? Um, so this is actually quite interesting because studies actually show that training the rest of the body prevents uh, a, a certain degree of atrophy in the areas that aren't being trained. So in other words, to put it in layman's terms, if I don't train my right arm because my right arm is injured, but I continue to work out my left arm, believe it or not, my right arm will actually lose less strength and muscle while it's healing. So continue to train the rest of your body so long as it's appropriate. And of course, avoid training the areas that you can't uh, currently train. However, when you're released to be able to train those areas again, start very, very slowly and you should recover uh, quite quickly. Muscle memory is a real thing. So when you get back into the workout, you'll notice that the strength gains and the muscle gains will come on real quick initially to kind of get you back to where you were before. How long did the doctor say you're uh, you're out for on chest and abs? So I'm clear. I can do them if I want to. I just, it's, um, it's not comfortable, if that makes sense. Sometimes it just feels weird. So I just don't want to push it and mess something up. I mean, you can probably guess what kind of surgery I had. I just don't want to mess anything up. I'm, I'm starting so, to piece it together right now. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just, I'm good. I just, he said, whenever I, I feel like I can, yeah, I yeah. can. So yeah, no, no. Okay. So, um, I, I'm, I'm assuming you don't have to confirm this. I'm assuming you have uh, augmentation that was done. Uh, and I've trained a lot of women who've had this type of procedure and they all say the same thing. They all say what you say when they go back to working out, the, it just doesn't feel right or it feels tight or it feels like something bad is going to happen when they train yeah. their chest. And that's because, uh, just through the, for the audience, it, with the, the most common way to do this is they'll place an implant under the muscle. It's now changed the, the angle of pull a little bit. And so it's not going to feel like it did before. Now, my recommendation is to continue to train it within your – as long as you're released to do so – within your your comfort zone and slowly over time you'll find that you'll get back to your training what you don't want to do is leave it alone completely forever you'll get a lot of atrophy you'll cause some dysfunction in the body you may actually cause dysfunction in the shoulders as a result of this so i would say stay within your comfort zone train very light start very easy move through full ranges of motion allow your body to dictate how hard you can go as it, as it continues to to, as it continues to become more comfortable. Yeah, the first step is really to reconnect. And, and so to make sure like you, you take that very gradually. So you, you spend time in certain ranges of motion and really try to 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 regain that sort of tension, that that response and contraction from your muscles. Uh, so uh, honestly, to, to do really slow reps or to pause or to do isometric type of uh, you, type of exercises, I think would be very valuable for you to start and just really gradually go through that. Then maybe progress to rubber bands or something a little bit less damaging uh, and make your way back real slowly. I'd be more concerned about uh, abs and core than I would be chest personally. Um, clients that I've trained that have done breast implants, I've always ended up focusing more on rowing anyways, because they, they typically tend to round their shoulder. I think everybody rounds their shoulders forward as it is. And then when you get surgery in there, it just kind of pulls and tightens everything forward even more. Uh, mm -hmm. So most of the energy and focus for training a, a client in your situation uh, would be centered around rowing. So you asked mm -hmm. earlier in the question you asked about you know, potentially replacing some of those chest exercises. Yeah, I would add another row in there, right? So I'd do like a cable row or another dumbbell row, whatever, whatever's not in that program. I'd add, uh, uh, you know, or suspension trainer row, add another row in there to help support that. Uh, that would be my main focus. And then I'd probably do more like core stability stuff instead of something directly like strength training core. Like I wouldn't put you through like a uh, like a heavy loaded, you know, sit up or anything like that, or, or a decline or a hanging, something like that, that's going to be a little strenuous on the abs right now. I would probably do more stability and core, uh, get you to activate that and kind of like Justin said, get reconnected uh, to those muscles. So that would be kind of my focus. And the, the chest stuff that, you know, Sal and Justin are kind of alluding to, I'd probably start to slowly progress to that and lightweight, easy, more focused on range of motion uh, down the road when you feel more comfortable. But I, I don't think it's going to hurt you to lay off of it for a little while. Yeah, the, the, that's a good point, Adam. Uh, I've actually worked with uh, probably five women who had frozen shoulder as a result mm -hmm. of uh, you know a procedure like this because they didn't move, they were afraid to move, didn't feel good. And then they actually, lost, their, their shoulder function uh, got so bad that they got what's called frozen shoulder. Um, so strengthen the mid back when you do your rows, like Adam said, focus on pulling the shoulder blades back and down. Okay, that's going to be real important. And then again, you got to, you still have to get the chest eventually to work through a full range of motion because you could have the strongest back in the world, but if your chest is, the, is so tight because you don't move it and you don't work it, um, that it pulls your shoulders forward, you you still are at risk for shoulder problems. Okay, awesome. All right, awesome. Thanks for calling. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's um in my experience when I've worked with clients uh, who've done this, the clients who trained consistently beforehand, mm -hmm. usually once they're cleared, it takes us about six months before they feel really good. Women who didn't train beforehand, it could take as long right. as a year. So I just and this is important to know if you're thinking about doing this. 
there is a bit of a recovery process mm-hmm. that goes beyond the just healing aspect. I've noticed that with any procedure. I mean, really, if you're going into to have any kind of uh, surgery or any kind of uh, you know invasive uh, you know type of medical procedure, I think that you know really train the body, making sure that uh, you know you're nice and strong for that rebound effect. It, it makes a massive difference. So I've I've had a little more success than something as long as six months, um, and I've actually trained north of twenty plus clients in this. Uh, in this situation, right? Um, what I have found is that there's a huge individual variance here. Uh, I've had clients that were literally um, back to weight training like two weeks later. And then I've had other ones at three months, we couldn't even do stuff. So really it's about how well their body recovers. And you would think that it would have a lot to do with you know how much they trained before and then how fast they recover, but it really just has to do with how fast that person recovers, period. Uh, I think that it, it's... The person who does train beforehand tends to have more of an advantage, but I've even seen that. I've seen some of my fittest clients took a really long time for them to recover and get back, and then somebody who I didn't think was that fit bounced right back. So there is a a huge individual variance here, and so you definitely have to listen to your body, take it slow. I don't think because so many people suffer from upper cross syndrome where their their shoulders are rolled forward, I'm less focused and worried about uh, training the chest, like I would, you know, give her ample time to feel recovered and really, really good. Most of my energy and focus is going to go on rowing and pulling those shoulders back and down. I do think there is, you know, quite a bit of urgency to establish like movement again in yep. terms of range of motion and yep. all that in order for the recovery process to actually, you know, occur. But yeah, it's it has to be very, very uh, much within the, the the range. The intensity has to be very much. Appropriate. Well, you're going to get a lot of that too with with back and rowing exercises. You so, are, but yeah. you know, what, what Justin's saying is like, your body will literally heal in a new way, in a new shape, a sure. new, in, in new movement. And when I said six months, I mean six months to get back to where they were before. Uh, we're training as soon as they're clear. As soon as they're clear, I'm handing them five pound dumbbells um, and we're just working through range of motion. We're just getting them comfortable with that range of motion. In about six months, they're pressing heavy. They're working out and feel nothing at all. And that's average, right? That's average. Some people a little faster, some people a little slower. But uh, yeah, if you're fit beforehand, typically any surgery, you, you just tend to heal. You have more You have more muscle to lose. You're not going to be in such a bad position because you're not moving. Yeah, I think of our, our, our mobility drill that we do in Prime Pro, which is the, you know, when she can, right? I, at this point, I don't know where, I didn't remember where she said she was at in the recovery process. Um, but I love like handcuffs with rotation or Justin's wall circles. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do that and she's going to be in a, a really good position. So to me, I'm, I'm focusing more on that than I'm worried about a chest press or a chest fly right now. You, you keeping good shoulder mobility and the ability to retract That's and depress key. is going to be the biggest key. I think our next caller is Ryan from West Virginia. Hey, what's up, Ryan? How can we help you? Hey, I was wondering what you guys thought about the sequencing of training, ordering hypertrophy first and then strength followed up by power. Okay, so you're asking about phasing your training. Um, and uh, that's actually a really good question because phasing is important. And the order of the phases actually uh, makes a difference. Now, for people who aren't familiar with the terms they use, right? So hypertrophy, meaning mm-hmm. muscle size and growth, typically – Straight sets, typically the rep ranges are anywhere between 8 to maybe 15 reps, typically. Strength would be more of the low end, kind of low gear type strength, lower reps, longer rest periods, so like 1 to 5 reps. Power is lighter weight, lots of speed uh, with your movement, so Olympic lifts would be a good example of that, but you could also do, you know, box jumps and, you know, kettlebell exercises to, to accomplish that, so... The first two that you named were hypertrophy and strength. Those are actually interchangeable in the sense mm-hmm. that uh, it doesn't matter which one you start with. I you would can make pick, an argument for both. Yeah, and I would pick the one that is least is is least like what you're doing now. So in other words, if you're currently training in a hypertrophy style, then I would start with strength. If you're currently training in strength, like a power lifter, then I would start with hypertrophy. The next one should be either strength or hypertrophy. So those are the two that you start with. Power usually last. And the reason for power being last it's the most technical. You're going to need strength. You're going to need hypertrophy. You're going to need the stability to perform that. It's the most advanced and most technical of the phases. Uh, I would very rarely would I ever have someone train power 
um, with speed power, especially before moving to the others, unless they're super experienced, advanced. You would never do that. No, yeah. no coach would ever. No coach would ever have power. Even if you were advanced, you still would lay some found foundation first before you express that. I mean, that's like in every every certification you'll ever go through, and they teach that in any schooling around you know kinesiology. So mm-hmm. you you always want power less. But I, I mean, I'm just gonna piggyback on what Sal's saying. I, I don't have anything really more to add and contribute other than, you know, I would have fun with changing the other ones up. Power is the only one that's really important that you lay a solid foundation of strength and stability before you express that, right? So that's the idea. Um, and then I guess the next thing you could add is about how long you plan to stay in those. <clears throat> I wouldn't stay in any phase longer than six weeks and I would go as long or as uh, no shorter than three weeks, some, somewhere in that range, which is very similar to any of our maps programming. Are you following any maps or have you followed maps, Ryan? I have not yet. Uh, I, that's why I was kind of r- wondering with your map performance, if you guys phased it sort of in that, that order like that. Yeah, that's the perfect mm-hmm. one for you. If you're looking for those types of phases, maps performance uh, would be ideal. Now, performance starts with more of a strength phase, but it moves through them. You do go through hypertrophy and you do have uh, other phases and it does end with the explosive movements we'll make sure to send that to you since you don't have that um and it's all okay. set up it's all set up and ordered uh ordered up for you so you'll just follow the program awesome thank you all right no problem yeah you know um i, I like questions like this because i think people are uh, it maybe this is just our own bias because they you know, our listeners people are start people are starting to realize the importance of the programming mm-hmm. right it's not mm-hmm. just exercises it's not just Body parts, but the order of operation, the order of operation, the intensity, the reps, the 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 intent. Like there's, I, I could literally list an almost infinite number of, of variables right. that make a big difference. Like they make a huge difference. You know, when when people's bodies stop responding, it's like they don't look at their programming anymore. It's yeah. like, what supplement can I take, or or am and I? Eating? What have you been doing? Where do you fit into all that? Like, how do I structure something that will actually like promote? change uh within what i've already been trying to accomplish i think too with these two like the first one we're, we're, we're talking about hypertrophy versus strength and you know as a trainer bringing somebody new in you know i would evaluate that too based on somebody i could see value in just like maybe hypertrophy being that uh we're, we're building more of a mind muscle connection maybe there's something there's a disconnect there and i think it's a great way to address that versus like just jumping right to strength or if somebody is lacking strength in certain areas we can hyper focus in that. So it, it just, again, it depends on the individual. So I like these questions and I don't like these questions. Uh, the reason why I don't like the question, I like the question for the same reason you guys do, but the reason why I don't like the question is because it loses a lot of people. You guys got to remember sometimes we're in our own little bubble here. Totally. We're talking about terms like power, hypertrophy, like this means nothing to the average person who's trying to get into working out or even phasing. Like, what the fuck does that mean to them? And so I think it's important that we... Phaser beans. Yeah, I, I think it's important that we kind of unpack this a little more than just giving this... Because the guy asking the question obviously has a, a pretty solid base knowledge. He's, mm-hmm. he's trying to write his own program, yeah. basically, and is asking a very good question and already is ordering it in a pretty good way. So yeah, that, obviously he knows what the hell he's talking yeah, about. That's why I tried to open with like, what does hypertrophy mean? What does strength mean? What does power mean? You know, yeah. Obviously, if you haven't got it by now, phasing is just essentially the period of time that you're focusing on one of those specific goals. Mm-hmm. And like Adam said, it's usually a three to six week period. So Three to six weeks, you're focused on strength. So you're doing reps between one to five. You're doing longer rest periods. You know, the next three to six weeks could be hypertrophy, maybe a little shorter rest periods. The reps are higher, eight to 15. Um, And then power is, uh, you know, kind of a combination of the two. You're doing fast exercises, lighter weight. It's not about going to failure at all. Actually, in fact, you don't even want to go to fatigue. And the rest periods might even be longer than you did with, uh, with strength. Um, and again, that's another three to six uh, weeks. And again, that's the most complicated phase. So if you're new, I wouldn't even worry about power uh, at all. Don't mm-hmm. worry about power at all unless you have something laid out in front of you that ex- really breaks it down for you. But just focus on strength and hypertrophy. Yeah, I rarely train clients in in power. The two clients I saw or the type of client, I should say, that I, I would train in power is either one, somebody who I had for like a really long time. And like, we were just, we're getting fun with their programming. I've taken them through so many like strength and hypertrophy cycles. And it's like, Hey, let's, you know, even though you don't, you didn't come to me with this goal of like how powerful or strong can I be? Let's, let's see how well we can express this. You've been training with me now for almost a year and we've gone through all these different phases. And so we might have fun with it like that. Or 
someone very specific who is like playing a sport or needs that power. And that's why they came to me. So that is the only time I really trained the average person in that, in the phase like that, for the most part, it's most valuable, I think for, you know, your athletes that are are looking for that or someone who's been lifting long enough and has got really good control and they, they are now looking, Oh, let's, let's see, test some limits and see how I can express that. Yeah. You know, it's funny DeFranco made the case for the average person to sprinkle in in power but but i think when most people think power they think like jumping up high on a box and you no, know doing it's, clean. it's just moving quickly and yeah I, and i think that's where he was alluding to and that's where the value i see for your average person but it looks different than yes what you would think if you're programming it for fitness so it's uh you know doing things like just a press but having your tempo change right so we're just moving right we're moving quicker and i think that the, that's massively valuable especially with rotational stuff because it emulates a lot of real world but type you, things you start real basic, yeah and you super basic. and you don't go there until you've done because let's be okay let's take oh, 100 yeah average. you add speed to any exercise you're you right made it way i mean i mean how many months did you spend with it? The, the average client who comes in who has like no strength or hypertrophy experience whatsoever how long do you spend it's with like a them? whole year yeah you're, yeah you're training and that's what i meant was like you know once i got to a place where like okay this client i can tell her do a chest press she can get her, her shoulders yeah, in the right yeah, position yeah. she can activate it i can tell her slow your tempo down she does it automatically mm-hmm. like on cue i can do that okay now that client we're ready we're ready to express this and let's mm-hmm. see let's have some fun with it with some speed until then i ain't messing with oh that. to give you an example I, I, yeah. I had an older client that i trained for a long time and then we got to this point and literally the first exercise we did was she didn't they, she didn't jump on anything she just jumped in place i just had her literally mm-hmm. jump in place and land and then we'd rest and then practice it just to give her the coordination and skill to, in case you know steps off a curb or right. needs to move a little quicker our next caller is Aria from Mexico. Hey, Aria, how can we help you? Hi. So I am a gardener. I live in a community uh, where we do a lot of work outside, gardening, gardening, landscaping, farming. And <clears throat> I started lifting weights in January after a seven-year pause from training. I used to cycle a lot before that. And... Mid-February, I started MAPS Anabolic, and I felt great because I wasn't doing anything outside. I was just working out. And now that gardening season started, I am spending like over five hours outside weeding, like bending over in the ground and shoveling stuff and lifting heavy things. So my lower back feels sore, and I have had... Um, a hard time squatting and like seeing gains in that side. Now I'm on the third phase of anabolic and my upper body feels great. I feel stronger. I feel better. My metabolism is better, but just my, like my squat and my deadlift is all right, but my squat is, um, um, I had to lower my weight a lot, uh, the amount of weight that I lift. So I was able to do the other stuff that I do. Um, so I still have this goal of getting stronger, move better, and I was going to start MAPS Anabolic again. So I wonder if you guys can help me, um, give me advice on how to face my workouts better or organize them better, or if maybe there's a program that I can do instead of anabolic to support my lifestyle performance yeah, yeah. Per- per- mass performance would be good but uh, you know i'm gonna go a little and we'll, okay. we'll get back to that but i'm gonna go a little bit uh deeper with this so you know and i've heard this from many people in different ways i've heard people say things like i just had a baby i don't have a lot of sleep so my recovery is off how do i change my workouts i've heard people say i just got a new construction job or you know there's some kind of life challenge that is now adding to the stress that's on their body. And so their current workout now is too much. And in every single case, my answer is the same. Modify the intensity and the volume of your workout. Okay. So if you're finding that what you're doing now in your workouts might be too much, if your low back is too tired, too sore, reduce the intensity, go lighter. And the third option would be to change the exercises. So squats tend to require a lot of low back uh, stability and strength. Mm -hmm. You can try moving to a split stance uh, exercises like lunges or split stance squats or Bulgarian uh, split stance squats that tend to put less 
pressure on the low back. But at the end of the day, you modify your workout to meet your lifestyle because obviously this is something you, you can't change. This is your livelihood. So this work takes a bit of a priority, but then change your workout. It might even mean that you do less workouts. Now, are you going to get less results? Not necessarily. Um, your work is a lot of activity. If anything, it might be a great combination and you might actually see better results. I'm, I'm going to push you in the direction of, of performance. And the, and the reason why is because I've actually had clients in this exact type of a situation and what tends to happen all the time, okay, so especially MAPS Anabolic. MAPS Anabolic is incredible at speeding your metabolism up, building good strength, but a lot of that strength is in the sagittal plane. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're facing the same direction all the time, and you get, you're really strong in that one direction. Uh, when you're gardening, you tend to be <clears throat> hinging over, rotating to the left, rotating to the right, kind of sideways sometimes, and there's not a lot of that focused in MAPS Anabolic, where MAPS Performance, most of that is focused. Sal pointed out unilateral work. Well, that's inside MAPS Performance. Rotational strength, that's in MAPS Performance. So I, I And also mobility, right? So another mm. thing that causes the low back to tighten up, somebody has to you know bend over to be down gardening when they can't really get all the way down and squat because they don't have the hip or ankle mobility to squat and do the work down there. Uh, the stuff that's in MAPS Performance around mobility is also going to help you there. So, and then where I do, totally agree with Sal is that you, for now, should back off the intensity. If the if the work inside the garden is is you know fatiguing the back, and then you go into MAPS Anabolic and you you know lifting heavy is really getting you, I would definitely agree with him. Uh, but I definitely would put some energy and focus on mobility and rotational strength. Yeah, I, I wanted to, yeah, totally echo both in, in terms of like what your focus, um, you know, could be now because it is a lot of volume that you're noticing with like demand for stability in your lower back. And so, you know, first thing is we can kind of pull back from that a little bit, but also reinforce uh, a lot of the stabilizing muscles uh, to support yourself uh, in those positions. And so like MAPS Performance does a great job of that, of Dressing, you know, a lot of mobility and, uh, you know, bringing it down to like the joint function and, and the strength and support around the joints, uh, which I think is will be massively beneficial and felt. So, uh, you, you know, to, to reduce the load and the demands, like stressing out your lower back on some level, but strengthening and supporting it and building up your core strength is going to be a big component. Aria, we're going to send you MAPS performance so you can follow that program, but also pay attention because it still may be too much intensity and volume. There are three foundational workouts in MAPS performance. There's nothing wrong with only taking two of those workouts and not doing the third one. And you can pick which one you want to do to reduce the intensity. So if you follow the program and you still find you're having issues with the recovery, just reduce the volume to the point where it starts to complement your lifestyle. Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. Yeah, I have been doing only two days a week of MAPS Anabolic because I couldn't, otherwise I felt the sim symptoms of overtraining. Okay. I couldn't sleep or um, I was just completely exhausted. So that's what I've been doing and also changed the trigger sessions for mobility work. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Very smart. Yeah. Do, do, you take, uh, do you take creatine by any chance? I don't. Give it a shot. See what happens. That should help you with some of your strength um, and even recovery. Creatine is a very safe and effective supplement for for every for most people. Um, they'll get great some great returns from from taking that. And so, well, I, and I'm recommending this to you because it sounds like you're following good programming and you got a good head on your shoulders. Of course, supplements can't. They're not going to be more important than nutrition and training. But creatine uh, should help you out in this that, case. That's a great point. I didn't even think about asking you nutrition stuff. Is I would also pay attention to your protein intake. Uh, do you track at all how much protein you intake daily? Um, I don't track, but I used to be vegan and that stuff. So now I'm just focused on eating meat um, at least four times a week. And having I supplement with uh, protein powder. Yeah, I would actually. When I feel like I'm low. Yeah, I would. I would, I would track for a week or so because that could be. I mean, that could have something to do with your recovery also. So if you are not getting mm. adequate protein uh, in for your your weight and your size and your activity level, uh, that could also be what's hindering your recovery. So take a look at that. Maybe spend a week. Uh, and, you know, just eat normal and track it and see what you're coming in at. And if it's, you know, significantly lower than what your body needs, then that could have a lot to do with your recovery too. Yeah, good point. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. No problem.
that was great that you went the creatine thing because I actually did. It didn't even dawn on me to ask her, which I know better because you know almost every uh, female client that I trained almost always yeah. under ate protein. And if you're coming off of being a vegan, mm -hmm. never eating meat, and she just yeah, alluded four that she, times a week. Yeah, four times a week. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, four times a day, you should probably be yeah. eating protein. Yeah, so, man, I tell you what, though, you know, it's funny when you when you talk about having a demanding job and then you're training on top of it, and it, at first it's really hard. I'll tell you what, I've trained a lot of blue collar workers. The body has a tremendous ability. Now, it takes time, but it has a tremendous ability to adapt to workload. Mm -hmm. And uh, over time, you know, look, I tell you what, I, when I would go and work with my dad in the summers, because it was in the summer and during the rest of the year, I wasn't helping him, I was sore and it sucked for like a month. And then as soon as my body started to adapt, I had to go back to school. I mean, these guys doing it all the time, like, you know, it doesn't, I mean, yeah, they get tired, but it doesn't break them down yeah. like it does when you don't do it often. So, you know, slowly over time, even five hours of, of gardening, your body starts to get to the point where it doesn't really cause much problem. Well, especially when you're, you're doing it correctly and you're supported, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I like the whole performance and the angle that Justin was talking about is like supporting the joints because that's where I would get like chronic pain from clients is if you're like, you know, they're fatigued and tired. And so they're like rounded over yeah. doing things versus like in a good deep squatted supported position while you're gardening. They're resting position. And I think too, like, a, like again, like, I don't know how long she can hold a squat or if it feels like, she, you know, it's, it's a position she's comfortable and can rest in that versus, you know, reaching over the whole time. I, that would be something to definitely address. Our next caller is Parker from Oklahoma. Hey Parker, how can we help you? Hey, what's what's going on? Not much, man. Not How yet. you doing? I'm good. We're so chilling. I've been strength training for about three years now, and I built up a pretty good strength base, but I've been working on losing some weight lately. And this uh, strength base has brought up some mobility issues that I'm working on with Prime Pro, and I'm running strong to preserve that strength while I'm losing weight. And I'm wondering if I can run strong and Prime Pro at the same time and reap both benefits. Oh, yeah. I'm, Prime Pro was designed to be run with any program or no program. It's a correctional exercise-based uh, program. So the mobility movements and the connection movements and the correctional exercise movements in Prime Pro, you do those um, throughout the day. And you can use them as priming movements as well, but do them throughout the day and then follow MAP Strong and adjust the volume and intensity of the correctional exercises if you feel like you're overdoing it. But um, it's, it's designed to be done with anything or nothing. It's not a workout yeah. program per se. It's more of a correctional. I guess it depends program. though on how much, like it depends on how much effort you want to put towards mobility. Right. Cause I would, I would even right. consider, um, you know, if, if it's, if mobility is a really big focus for you, which like it was for me not that long ago, um, I would probably cut back or eliminate the work sessions on strong and replace that with like an all mobility day. Because the yeah, strong, that's, that's the, what I've been doing. Okay, yeah, I love that because the foundational days in mm -hmm. strong themselves are is great programming. You're going to get great results from that. You're going to yeah. retain plenty of muscle and still probably get stronger running that program like that. And then instead yeah. of the work sessions, I would actually go and 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 I would agree with Sal too. Though I would still be trying to do like I would have uh, those two or three days a week that are pure you know, 40 minutes to an hour of all mobility type work. And then I would probably pick one or two mobility drills that are making the greatest impact right. uh, on as my your primers, right? As your primer and you're yeah. doing that every day. So like for him, like we will use me as an example, like I was working on all my mobility, but my, you know, combat stretch and my 90, 90 were, those were my like go-to moves that I was doing like every day, multiple times a day and always before I did any workout. And then I tried to have a couple days in the week where it was like just a full dedication towards mobility with whatever program I was Yeah, running. the beauty of Prime Pro is it helps to kind of uh, really isolate and see like the grossest offenders. So you could you could see, is it the ankles that really need the most work? Is it the shoulders? You know, where in my body, you know, can I really hyper focus and, and see the most return from? And when you get through that, uh, like to, to both their points is like, this is where now you want to figure out how to, to add that ritual uh, uh, almost every day. And so maybe it's less because you're putting more demand on your body in, in these foundational workouts. Uh, but then, you know, the following day, you look at it more as a recovery. And so you're going to do a bit more in terms of like movement and also like adding more stability around the joints. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That's what I've been doing. And I felt good 
Okay. I feel more mobile. Me and my mom have both been running Prime Pro, oh, and good. we both feel way better just oh. after one week. Oh, that's, oh yeah, that's Brad. great, man. Well, thanks for calling. Yep, thank you guys. Yeah, I think the key to remember with any goal is if you're focused on more than one goal in your training, you're going to get each of them slower. You know, yeah. so if I'm trying to get strong and mobile. I'll get some strength and I'll get some mobility. If right. I want to get a lot of mobility, then I got to focus just on that. A lot you, of strength. You can focus on do that. it, but yeah, you're right. It's it's uh, specificity always applies, and so if like your focus is really like uh, on on accomplishing two, and those are two, I mean the they're not the same goal. So so you're going to get into that conundrum where it is going to kind of draw out your your success. Well, and e although they both can be pursued at the same time, sure. they are a bit conflicting, mm. and, and a lot of that is the the psychological piece is that, and I, I remember battling with this you know also you know wanting to still be buff and strong but then knowing like okay i really need to address mobility and i actually i had to let go of that i had to kind of let go of like the inevitable i'm probably going to lose a little bit of muscle i need to stop worrying about being so strong yeah. or being so mm -hmm. buff if i really really want to get mobile and so th th that became more the foundation right so even though i told him to to change the work sessions i actually the way i was going into weeks is like my most important days were those three mobility days mm -hmm. and then oh i'm going to add some strength training in there too so so I don't completely like atrophy and disappear. Yeah, but even with the strength training, it's mobility focused. It's right. lighter. Way range of motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm challenging range of motion yeah. and stuff like that. I'm not trying to push the most weight I possibly can. I know can. you said conflicting, and I do want to, uh, to make sure that I, I, am, uh, I clarify, like better mobility done properly will eventually make you stronger, faster, and give you better strength gains as well. So- mm -hmm. We don't mean conflicting in the sense that if you if you build one, then you lose the other one forever. They're complementary. They're very complementary. Right, right. So I think I think a better way for me to say it is they're they're conflicting psychologically. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because when you when you go the into the intent is different. That's right. When you go into a a quote unquote strength based program, your goal is to get stronger and add more. And you're weight. lifting differently. And you're lifting differently. Yes. It is you are you are lifting to lift the most weight, which doesn't always mean the fullest range of motion or the best form and technique that's right and so it's the psychological piece that is that is conflicting it's like not exactly it's not and i know i would get some shit for that right oh that's not true at all if you get a greater range of motion you can build more muscle yes we would agree with that but what happens is if you are really trying to get strong and you're really trying to get mobile you end up you hit this crossroad at one point where it's like oh i'm doing bench today and i feel really good and strong and you want to hit to your max yeah, i'm supposed to do 90 percent of you know and in, in low reps or whatever but it's like but i gotta work on my mobility that's right. Work on my, right that's right our next caller is bailey from texas hey bailey how can we help you hey guys uh first want to say thank you for everything you guys do i transitioned from endurance training to resistance and podcast has been super helpful so Thanks for everything. Boom. Uh, we did it. I, uh, <laughs> thanks. I recently bought the summer bundle um, and starting the aesthetics program. So my question is, there's a lot of rest periods uh, between sets and just a lot of time in the gym, which I get, but wondering if it will hinder my progress if I cut some of the, res the time down, maybe in half or superset different muscle groups. Yeah. Yeah, it will. So the rest period, especially by the way, somebody like you who was an endurance person before. Yeah, I know okay. this. Mm -hmm. I know this must be. It must be uh, super hard, right? Because you're used to that kind of training, that kind of fatigue. Go, go, go! And you know, yeah. uh, I would train clients like you a lot, and they would hate sitting there and resting. Why do I got to rest? I feel like I could do yeah. more. The rest period is part of the programming that is pushing the right type of adaptation. Now, supersets themselves aren't necessarily bad. Neither are shorter rest periods, but there's a time and a place. And you'll find those in the third phase of MAPS aesthetic. You're going to get all the supersets and short rest periods you could ever desire yeah. in phase three. But when you're in phase one and phase two, follow the program. Now, if you want to cut the short the rest periods a little bit, that's fine. So if it says two minutes or three minutes and you want to do it in a minute and a half or whatever, Okay, but I would not okay. go. I would not go shorter than one minute. One minute is the, the the shortest rest period that I would have anybody take if they're trying to build their metabolism, build strength, you know, sculpt their body. Um, mm -hmm. in, in any of the, the especially those first. Otherwise, two we're, phases. we're getting into aerobics. I mean, we're getting right. real, you're flirting with that, and somebody who already has a you know background like you like you do in endurance. Uh, you you're already got that adaptation really well. So mm -hmm. you want to go the complete opposite. In fact. 
I would even I would before I would ask uh, let you take 15 seconds off or whatever. I would actually rather see you drop an, uh, an exercise. You know, maybe I I don't know what pro- what program we're talking about aesthetic, aesthetic right now. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there's shrugs Six. or cat yeah shrugs or calf raises in there that I will allow. I'd rather see you drop that off and to stick, make the workout. Shorter. Yeah, to make the work like if it was a time thing, right? So if a client came to me and said, Adam, this thing is taking me an hour and 20 minutes if I follow the rest periods the way, way it is and I just don't have that time. I need, mm-hmm. I need to get done by an hour or whatever. Can I speed it up? And I would say, no, I don't want you to speed it up. I would pick a couple exercises that maybe that person needs less of and I would drop them off or drop a couple sets off of a couple exercises to say that but the rest periods are important to the adaptation that we're trying to achieve, like Sal said. Okay, cool. That makes a lot of sense. I appreciate it. Awesome. And congratulations for the tra- the transition. And now what have you noticed real quick from moving from endurance to strength? I'm hungry all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That's actually one of the best signs. Uh, that is, oh, yeah. That it's is a, nice. That is a direct sign that your metabolism is kicking in and that your hormones are probably in a better position. You probably are noticing better sleep, increased libido, and of course, the way you look. I'm sure your body's starting to sculpt and shape. For sure. Yeah, well. there's been a big change even just over like two months. Wow. That's, That's awesome. Well, congratulations. Great job. Thanks. Appreciate all you guys do. No problem. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, there's like a few clients, I would say, that were the hardest to train. Like one would be <laughs> yeah. the uh, the ex-athlete who was yeah. like a hardcore athlete 10 years ago, and then they hired me, and I'm trying to get them to not beat the crap out of themselves. Uh-huh. This is another tough one. The super endurance fanatic that goes yeah. in strength training, they just can't. They, they can easily turn everything into endurance. Yes. Yeah, it's, it just can get away. And yeah, it's it's really just pulling them back on their own tendencies and, and you know, likes because it is, it's one of those like uh, things that's just, it's, it's hardwired at, at a certain point if that's like, like what you really enjoy the most out of working out. So it's your job as a coach to really kind of keep presenting the value of of rest periods and how the mm-hmm. intent of that and why that's like appropriate in, in order to, to get your body to change the way you want. Yeah. You know what skill came in handy? Well, I had to develop training these types of people was conversation skills because I yeah. would literally, yeah. we're going to rest between sets. So I'm going to, we're yeah. going to have a great You got to like keep them entertained, right? Yes. Like, yeah. cause just resting is like, it was like yeah, torture. I actually, people. I would, I used to stop watch this client. I mean, this is the uh, aerobics uh, group X client, oh, you know, yeah. the client yeah. that loved classes and that like high energy, keep it moving type of training. And then they came to me and then we're doing a strength training phase. It's like, I would literally be like, you cannot go to the next set until this. And if they, and the thing you have to be ready for as a trainer, when you hear back is like, Oh, it's too easy. Okay. Well then let, let's increase the load then because mm-hmm. that is the idea of what we're trying to do right now. And they will continue to want to start earlier because they've just been training that way for so long. Totally. Look, if you like what you hear here on the podcast, you'll love our free information. Go to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides on fat loss, muscle building, and more. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.